more about the Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Exchange links is Professor Sung Wan San from California State University. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you. How significant is this Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect? It is uh, very uh, significant. Uh, this is uh, another step in the globalization of the uh, China's uh, financial markets. Uh, as you recall, in November of 2014, uh, the link between Shanghai and Hong Kong was established. And since then, things have been going very well. And this, I think, will boost the overall, again, the globalization of the China's uh, uh, financial markets. Well, that being said, how does this new link compare, or how is it different to the Shanghai Hong Kong stock link? Uh, what effect will each have on the other? Well, the, uh, uh, the, the difference, the main difference, uh, one of the differences between uh, Shanghai and Hong Kong is the fact that the Shanghai stock market is more oriented toward uh, uh, more online manufacturing and uh, has more <coughs> history than uh, Shenzhen, whereas the, in Shenzhen stock market, it is uh, oriented toward more uh, new economy. In fact, if you look at the two-thirds of the firms listed at the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, they are so-called the private companies as opposed to state-owned enterprises. And so you can see the emphasis that is quite different between Shanghai and Shenzhen. The sizes are you know, roughly about the same. Shanghai is the uh, fifth largest stock market in the world, and uh, Shenzhen is the eighth largest. But the emphasis, the type of companies that we are trading, and they are uh, somewhat different. Let's take a look at the investors. What does this all mean for investors, both domestically and internationally? Well, it goes both ways. Uh, for the Chinese firms and Chinese investors, uh, they can actually uh, raise money and invest in uh, international firms outside of China. Uh, up until now, it was very difficult to invest uh, you know, outside of China, but because of the links in uh, Shanghai and then, of course, now Shenzhen, uh, Chinese investors will have an easier time investing overseas. Uh, this will also give uh, more liquidity, and the firms are trying to raise capital overseas. They are able to uh, raise capital not only from domestic sources in China, but also from international sources outside of China through Hong Kong. So you can see uh, this gives you an opportunity not only for the Chinese firms to invest, but also raise capital. Uh, also, at the same time, if you look at the uh, international investors, uh, uh, you know, now they, they can not only invest in Hong Kong, but also uh, the stocks listed in uh, uh, China. So they can participate in the economic growth of uh, China as well. And then we do know that all transactions will be done in RMB. Was, was this a given? What is your take on that decision? Well, uh, the Chinese government has been trying very hard uh, to make uh, RMB an international currency, the key currency, and of course, uh, it has already been included in the IMF uh, basket. So, uh, I think uh, international, uh, you know, the, China, the RMB has become an international currency. So, uh, this is again another step, at least on the part of the Chinese government, trying to push in that direction, make it an uh, international currency. All right, Professor Sung Wan-san, as always, we appreciate your perspective. Thanks for joining us from Los Angeles.